Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. Every welding environment is different and needs to be evaluated by a qualified industrial hygienist to determine the appropriate course of action for fume controls. Your personal safety relies upon the proper use and care of your PAPR blower to keep it working effectively. Your blower system should contain the following components. Blower unit with padded belt, HEPA filter, pre-filter, spark guard, and two lithium ion batteries. Your full PAPR system will also include a Miller head assembly, a battery charger, a breathing tube with flame resistant cover, backpack style shoulder straps, and a flow meter. Ensure that the spark guard, pre-filter, and HEPA filter are undamaged. To change the filter, follow these steps. First, place the spark guard into the filter cover then insert the pre-filter on top of the spark guard. Finally, insert the HEPA filter on top of the pre-filter. Insert the filter assembly by sliding the tabs on the filter cover into the brackets on the blower assembly, then push down on the filter cover until it clicks into position. To check the airflow level, use the flow meter to ensure the airflow is above 170 LPM. To do this, connect the breathing tube to the blower assembly. Then, insert the flow meter into the breathing tube. Be sure the breathing tube is straight and untwisted. Hold the flow meter straight up and start the blower. Airflow is adequate if the flow meter ball moves above the min mark. If the flow meter ball is below the min mark, do not use the respirator and begin troubleshooting. Here are a few troubleshooting tips when checking your airflow. Check the battery to make sure it has enough charge. With more than one bar of charge, no alarms sound. Ensure the spark guard is clean. If airflow is still too low, change the pre-filter and retest. If airflow is still too low, change the HEPA filter and retest. If airflow is still too low, a new blower unit may be needed. You'll also want to make sure the airflow alarms are in proper working order. Block the airflow by placing your hand over the breathing tube until the alarm sounds and the blower vibrates for about 15 to 20 seconds. If alarm does not function, do not use the respirator. To remove the battery, push the battery unlock button and pull the battery out of the blower. To insert the battery, slide the battery into the blower until the battery snaps into position. If your battery isn't charged, follow these steps. Connect the charger cord to the battery terminal. Then, connect the charger to the 120 volt AC receptacle. The charger's light will turn red when the battery is charging and green once it is fully charged. The battery will stop charging when the unit is fully charged. This typically takes about three hours. Things that can impact the life of your battery include particulate concentration, the filter, the age of your battery, and your altitude. Inspect the breathing tube and replace it if it's damaged or the inside of the tube is dirty. Check the belt assembly and make sure it is in good condition. If you see any noticeable holes, burns or tears, it's time to replace it. Be sure to inspect the belt pad and shoulder straps as well. The unit is powered by using the on-off button. To start the blower, press the on button for one to two seconds. The danger indicator alarms will flash, sound, and vibrate momentarily. The PAPR blower has an external LED indicator. The LED indicator is green during normal operation, 
orange when the filter is nearing end of life, and red when the filter must be changed. The blower always starts on low speed. The blower speed control can switch from low to high by pushing the up button again. To access the menu, press the information button. This menu provides the user with access to five different screens. Use the up and down navigation button to scroll through the screens. Menu option one, the filter lifetime screen, displays the number of hours since the last reset. Press the information button, then press the power on off button to confirm. Menu option two is the clock screen which displays the current time. To set the clock, press the information button and use the up and down buttons to change the hour. Press the information button again to select the minutes. When the time has been set, press the information button. The third menu option references the external LED indicator on the outside of the blower. To change this setting, press the information button. Press the power on off button to confirm the selection. Menu option four indicates the LCD contrast setting. To change, use the information button to cycle through the contrast levels. After selecting a contrast level, press the power on off button to confirm. The last menu option displays the orientation of the on-screen menu. To change, press the information button, then press the power on-off button to confirm. To stop the blower, press the on-off button for two to three seconds until the blower stops. Proper fit of your Papper blower will maximize comfort for all day wear. First, Hook the backpack style shoulder straps up to the blower assembly belt pad. Then place the blower assembly against your lower back and slide the shoulder straps over your shoulders. Then fasten the belt around your waist. Adjust the straps and belt to a snug but comfortable fit. Your Miller Papper blower assembly is now ready for use. For a NIOSH-approved system, the Miller Face Shield Head Assembly must be paired with the Miller Papper Blower Unit. For more information on your Papper system, visit MillerWelds.com respiratory.